How are you doing, Coach Addison here? Coach Lee Addison, I should say, of rugbyleaguecoach.com.au with some more pontifications about coaching and playing rugby league. Last week I gave out a invitation on our social media to ask any questions that you felt you needed to, whether you're a coach or a player. Um, and we've had a few and I'm going to spread them out over the next sort of few weekends and release them for your use and pleasure, hopefully. Uh, as you move forward into 2021. Uh, the first one I've picked out is from a, a member and follower, Charlie Wells. Charlie, thank you so much. And he asks if there's any drills or tips to get players to communicate. So obviously this answer applies to players and coaches. I want you to picture the scene. And this will have happened on thousands of training fields around the rugby league world. Picture the scene. Boys, girls, you just need to talk, talk, start talking. Because the session's quiet. How many times have you heard that, have I think? There's a few things missing there. Number one, the players probably don't know what to say. So my first tip is teach them what to say. So, uh, for example, if you're talking to your halves, you might tell them an override call or a dummy call to say I want the ball or I'm pretending I want the ball um, you might teach your outside backs your back rowers all that kind of thing to do something similar and then there's the general hustle well done good work uh, I'm here I'm here I'm ready so on and so forth and the general hustle terms that you can use like let's get louder boys keep it up all that kind of thing with positive vibes you tend to find that intensity in training and positivity around training is very much linked to noise levels. So actually, tip number one, teach your players what to say because they probably don't know, okay? And just because you're a rugby league player doesn't mean that you are outgoing and gregarious. You might actually be quite shy. So first tip is teach your players what to say. Tip number two if training isn't loud enough, stop it and make them start whatever you are doing again. And do that 500 times if you need to until you get the volume levels that you need. One tip or one coaching idea to get those noise levels going is when you're doing dynamic stretches in training, get your team to work as a line. And the call might be hold, hold up, set, set green, whatever it may be. And don't let them do the first couple of stretches until the volume levels are where you want them to be. And also encourage them to be in a line. And look after the person on the left and the person on the right. And if they do that, they've got responsibility and they know something that they can say. So remember that first point. A lot of people don't talk because they don't know what to say. So if you give them a responsibility of looking after that person on the left and person on the right, if that person on the left shoots up out of the line, they can pull them back. Or if they're hanging behind, they've got something to say to them to move them forward. And the third tip relating to that question is regarding games or drills. Well, I think I've just talked to you about talked with you, sorry, about one drill there that can that can be used. You can apply it to anything really, that principle, but one thing I do, and it's very big in my coaching, is I play games. And I actually don't give my players too many instructions. My instructions will be maximum 30 seconds long. And I use the power of my whistle to let them know if they're doing it wrong. So, for example, picture a scene. Imagine you're playing a game, let's say 8 versus 8. And the defensive team has to get up and down off the ground on every play of the ball. So straight away, the advantage is if you've got the ball, right? So every player in your team will want the ball. Every player on the opposition team who's defending will be getting up each other because they want the ball too, right? So straight away, you have something to communicate about. And what you do within your game is rather than bombard them with instructions... Blow your whistle, say turn over or six again or whatever it may be, but allow your players to work it out. And they will talk to each other eventually. 
or if they just look at each other and wait for an answer, teach them what they should be talking about. So do you understand the theme here? The, the big thing is players don't know what to talk about sometimes, so you actually have to teach them. And I think, ultimately, you've got to remember as a coach that the more you talk, the less the players will be talking. So your job as a coach is to unlock the talent, the skill, the personality, and dare I say it, the genius of your players. It's not about you, the coach, it's about them, the players, and you've got to try and unlock that. So the more you're talking, the more they'll be listening and not talking. So give them things to talk about. And just make sure you have your boundaries and say, well, you're not talking, now it's me, and so on and so forth. One person talks, the rest listen. I hope that's gone some way to answering that question. If you need any more, send it through on the social media um, that you see this video on. There's also something else I want to bring up, particularly for those who are in and around the Brisbane area. What we're going to do in the coming weeks before the second aim hire in North Brisbane is I'm going to allow one person on the north side of Brisbane to come for free. Now, that one person, I want them to be someone who battles in the game. So, dare I say it, they may battle financially, but they might battle because they're smaller than everyone else or because they have to travel a long way to get to training or something like that. They may battle because they have some kind of disadvantage that I've not mentioned. I want to give a space to somebody on the Brisbane North Aim Higher programme with that. Uh, in mind can you please start sending in recommendations as to who that should be the only rule I'm going to put in there is you can't nominate a member of your your own family or anything like that it's got to be somebody else so if you think it's somebody in your family get somebody else to nominate them okay um, I want to open that up to someone who is struggling in some way so doesn't necessarily have to be financially, but it might be they're the smallest player in their team by a country mile or something like that. Um, it may be that they don't have transport to get to training or something like that. Okay? Have a great week. Football, rugby league is happening more and more around the world as this COVID thing starts to come under a little bit of control in some places. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I have some better news next week. See ya.